In 1872, Yellowstone became the world's first national park. Yeah, which means the majestic area that is one of America's greatest treasures, beloved parks, just turned 150 years this uh, years old this year. The sesquicentennial, not easy to say. The huge following for, of course, the Kevin Costner TV show Yellowstone, my favorite show, is, has probably helped spark a little interest in Yellowstone. Many visitors, of course, visited last year, a record number, we understand, during the pandemic. So what... What is it, the magic of this place? Well, D.A. Galloway is a former Yellowstone tour guide who recently wrote about the expedition that led to the park's founding in his new novel, Burning Ground, and he joins me now. Uh, D.A., what a delight to meet you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, we'll talk about Burning Ground and your terrific novel uh, in a little bit here, but I, I think it, it's always interesting to, to find out what led you to Yellowstone the first time. I understand you went there for the first time as a young man. I certainly did. I was fortunate enough to be selected to be to work in Yellowstone for what was then the park concessioner, mm -hmm. Yellowstone Park Company. That's the company that does uh, all of the things throughout the park that the tourists enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know, you need you know, the hotels and uh, the service stations and the restaurants and so forth. And uh, they also conducted uh, tours. And I was a tour guide for in the late 70s for an entire summer. And it was a wonderful, life-changing experience. And then you were kind of hooked. Is that is that when you fell in love with the place? Absolutely. It was in my blood. And um, I, I fell in love with the place because where else could you go to see such wondrous things in in a, in an area set aside for the public and and so i've i've had a love for the place ever since that time and as a tour guide it's interesting too because i know you get a, a you get a first-hand look at this place right before the people roll up before the tourists with their cameras or their cell phones nowadays come and invade and all the cars and the people and the voices you're there when she's first waking up you're saying good night to the park so you're seeing her differently than than the, the average visitor would yes indeed in fact uh, a, a confession uh, that i'll share with you is that now, as a young 20-something-year-old man, I made some mistakes that um, some tourists today might make those same mistakes, but out of naivete. Um, for example, uh, I survived a, a grizzly bear charge. Oh, my goodness. Uh, fortunately, for, fortunately, it was a bluff charge, but I was hiking in a remote area of the park in the southeast arm of the lake uh -huh. by myself. A no-no, you should not do that. Yet I did it, and uh, unfortunately, the grizzly was not a sow with calves or cubs, rather. Or um, it you might not be here today. Animal. Yeah, that's right. No, <laughs> and we know those grizzly encounters gladly are few, uh, but you, that's not somebody or something you want to be encountering in the middle of a national park as much as we'd like the photo opportunity. Um, let, talk to me a little bit about what you were able to we don't want to go into a full history lesson but there but it is significant enough when we are talking about the 150th year of Yellowstone right and and those early days and the efforts to make sure this was a place that Americans and, and travelers from around the world could come and partake in the great outdoors in its purest form uh, absolutely. So just a really brief overview. I, I think a lot of uh, Americans, indeed uh, world citizens, may not appreciate uh, how close we came to Yellowstone as we know it today being commercialized. And uh, the, a large reason why it was set aside 150 years ago was the 1871 expedition by a man, uh, uh, led by a man by the name of Ferdinand Hayden. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hayden led an expedition throughout the park they and it was sponsored by congress so they were taking temperatures of the thermal springs and doing measurements and climbing mountains and mapping and photographing and painting and they brought that all back to congress at the end of their expedition and it, it was so awe-inspiring for the that congress passed the law that president grant then signed into law in, on March 1st of 1872 that became the world's first national park. So 
kudos to Hayden. Yeah, those early, his, those for, early days. For bringing it alive. For, for sure, people. for sure. For all of us to enjoy. And, and that brings me to the next point is because, you know, that geyser we know uh, the, the photos you see from there are such a draw and especially last year during the pandemic when people were trying to find safe trips to take if you can't get on a plane drive to Yellowstone we saw a record number of people traveling there the flip side of that is that's a record number of people there right you know where I'm going with this is there a concern over the the health and welfare of the park with that increase and in influx of visitors Absolutely. There are many people that share that uh, exact concern, Michaela. In fact, uh, uh, a couple of people have said, use the term, I, 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 I think it's appropriate. Are we loving our national parks to death mm. is the question. Uh, and, and I would say you don't want to discourage people uh, from going to these national parks, Yellowstone or others, because they're for our enjoyment. Yes. And But there are things that you need to recognize. The infrastructure has not caught up with <laughs> the amount of visitors. Yeah. It's twice as many people visited Yellowstone last year as in 1977 when I was there as a tour guide, mm -hmm. and yet the infrastructure hasn't dramatically changed. So you got to think about alternatives. Go in the off season. Yellowstone mm -hmm. is beautiful mm -hmm. in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, go, go to non the, the places that aren't so popular. Sure. Everyone wants to see Old Faithful, but there are hundreds and hundreds of geysers. You make a very good point. We have a tendency to follow the crowd. And if anything, Yellowstone, I mean, let's not go too rogue off piste, but like there, there's lots of places to explore in Yellowstone and take it from a tour guide. He knows, he knows the stories you could tell that are probably not even TV friendly. I'm sure there's some stories that you'll have to write about one, one day, DA. Okay, uh, before we pass on, uh, pass, move along in the show, you got to tell me about Burning Ground. It's interesting that you decided to do a fictionalized version uh, instead of writing perhaps like a memoir of your travels. Why did you decide that a novel was the way to go? Well, uh, I did that because I really wanted to blend two things. One, I talked about the Hayden Expedition, and in fact, it's the story is rooted in it's a, t a story of a, a, a man and a young man in 1971 going back in time and imagining him being with the Hayden Expedition with a group that was among the first white men to have actually experienced the park before there were boardwalks, before there were hotels, before there were tourists, and they were seeing the, the park in its natural beauty sands all, all of the visitors that we have today. Right. And by the way, Burning Ground come, it, there's a lot of uh, history with the Native American culture too. Mm -hmm. The, the burning ground comes from the name that the Crow Indians called the land that they uh, that, that was part of their territory. They called it the land of burning ground because from a distance, it surely does look it like does the ground. It does look like it's on fire. Exactly. Uh, well, Adia, this has been really a delight to chat with you. It's interesting because this caught the attention of our team, uh, the producers. We, we all sort of thought, geez, got to talk to a guy who has spent a good portion of his life in this place that so many of us find magical and, and beautiful. Let me tell you about the book. It is, again, called Burning Ground, available wherever books are sold. Uh, D.A. Galloway, the author of it, thanks so much for sharing your memories, some perspective, some insight into uh, our national park. Thank you for having me. Be well. Be well.